<laughs> what is an I wasn't going to talk about analogous emotional experience till the very end and then just mention it, but since it came up, physical action stir emotions. Stanislavski's kept saying, what is the best way to stir our emotional memory? And direct emotional recall through digging into the past is not the best way. <sighs> hours in rehearsal, submerge ourselves, envelop ourselves in the wonderful, fantastic, imaginary world of Sophocles. Okay. Everybody, let's begin with um, placement of the voice first, just humming and chewing. Mm -hmm. Feel the voice in the mask of the face. triggered and you just started finding physical reactions, especially you. Who did the work? Let the dead. Well, singing it really like makes the text enter your body in a much Good. deeper place. And then moving about forces that. I'm not the man. Not now. You are the man if this victory goes to you and you go free. You know, movement needs physical action delineation and clarity. Speech needs it too or the action's lost. Then don't at least work this out to anyone. Keep it a Dear secret. God, do that shout it from the rooftops. I'll hate you all the more for your silence. Tell all the world. Save yourself. I don't grudge you your survival. No, no. And denied my portion in your death? I asked you all to look at both versions of the play, the Ennui and the Sophocles. What were your impressions? As far as the, the Ennui, mm -hmm. the Ennui. Um, it was much more modern because it was written in the 40s and so it was in a language that was easier to understand uh, and it made all the characters more approachable and likable the Creon character became less of a tyrant and more of a father, someone more rational and willing to talk things through. Um, and it seemed like it made the Antigone character younger, brattier, more defiant, and the judgment was more on the Antigone character. Um, whereas Sophocles doesn't put any judgment on the characters, they just are what they are. Ismene, in, in this is the Sophocles version, is very um, sympathetic to her sister, but she's got her principles too, and she doesn't waver on hers either. And then Creon is is only about principle, and he comes. He is a, a tyrant, and he is going to crush whoever it is, even if it's a family member. And in and in the Ennui one, he try he gives Antigone so many chances again and again to to redeem herself please say it's not true please i beg you not to make me do what i have to do i'm i'm bet and she refuses and there's a struggle there that doesn't exist in the in the um in the sophocles version it's cut and dry so i i so we agreed that the sophocles version then is the one we're going to work on yeah. is that the everybody feels that way the dawning of this play begins with the death of the two older brothers of Ismene and Antigone. 
a death that fulfills the curse of Oedipus upon his two sons for having rejected him, dying at one another's hands. So the suicide of the mother, the shame of the father, visited upon the two daughters, and Antigone sees it as her duty to finally bring down the entire house of Oedipus and to seek revenge against her uncle, Creon, who has condemned her brother, Polynices, to a, a shameful death. He is not to be buried. These were people that very much looked at life based on cause and effect and on what we call today universal laws or laws of physics. They saw very clearly as cause and effect. Uh -huh. The catalyst is always a major act, usually a catastrophe of some kind or something which defies the natural order. Something which throws everything out of balance. The decree. The decree. The decree. The, the decree. decree. So let's do a series of tableaus. Now we're going to analyze the play actively on our feet. That is enough discussion. We do not want to have any more than five minutes of it, just to understand. And we're going to create a, just like a film director will create a series of story pictures on a storyboard to show the physical settings for each. We're going to create a story of a storyboard for each of the major events of the play. And we're going to put a caption under each one. And the caption is going to come from the actual text. All right. You understand? So what would we call the very first event? Creon's decree. decree. Creon's we're going to create a, a composition. It doesn't have to be true to life. It can be a metaphoric composition that is named Creon's decree. An emergency decree, they say, the commander has just now declared for all of Thebes. Yeah, maybe the two of you could do the brothers. They kill each other at the same moment, don't they? Yeah. And you think of the whole body, like, it should look like a tableau sculpture you'd see in a museum. Our two brothers, both gone in a single day. A double blow, both shedding their own blood hand to hand. What is m your motivation, and I mean the motivating force, what is the seed, the kernel, that the em emotional seed and kernel, can you find one word that pushes you through the whole play, through the whole experience? Love. Beautiful. I was born to join in love, not in hate. That is my nature. How strong is that in you? It's what I am. If that, if love is so powerful that it is your motivating force, your seed, your kernel that moves you through the whole play and is all about your life, then why does it come out then, and how do you need to say it so that it affects him? How, how do you want him to react to it? That's what you need to think about. it, Because it obviously is something that comes out without thought. Mm, I agree. I agree. It just there. Yeah. Now, on the very day that I, give, that I am giving my speech that, that I am going to govern alone, I put forth a decree stating that no one is to touch Polynesus' dead, rotting body out on the battlefield because that, is my, that was my way of taking the reins and letting people know that I am not going to be messed with. This is my kingdom now, and I will, and I will rule it. All, I truly believe that I was doing it in the best interest of everybody. I wasn't, I, I have a lot of pride, but I was doing it for the better, betterment of our country. And by the time I realized that my own selfish pride, my own overbearing ego 
has completely obs obscured my view of the truth. It was all my, my own pride and ego that overcame everything and I ulti ultimately ended up with nothing. John, that was very passionately told and very clear what it is. From your viewpoint as the character, you already seem to have that state of I am, I exist, in the, which Stanislavski called the state of I am, and uh, very connected to the character. Being around this family is like avoiding daggers coming at you. <laughs> And I have to survive in this situation. And I am, I am too old. <laughs> I've gotten old. And my motivating force is um, honor, is what drives me. It's a little soon to talk about the super task of your character, the super objective of your character. But I choose you want... the actions that are going to lead to my survival. Antigone chooses hers that lead to her honor into her um, being honored. Mine are to live. It's not to love, it's not to be honored, it's not pride, it's nothing but to be able to not die. Regarding Ismaini's um, sexual relationship with Creon, it makes so much sense. I think that that, I love her and I still adore her, but I think that is a tremendous strain on our relationship that is always just beneath the surface between us and our interactions. And it's, it's separated our closeness, but she is surviving as a woman in her time as she knows best. You've built your circumstances for your second plan improvisation. Yeah. Is Mani and Creon. That was kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> really? 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 Yeah. But you were naked, weren't you? Yeah. That's yeah. Because cool. okay. I came through very clearly. It was very interesting. Yeah. Fully clothed, but I just kept thinking, my God, she took off all her clothes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yours evoked p compassion and pity, but especially pity because you were giving yourself to a man only for survival reasons.
So your seed really came through, which is also manifesting, going to manifest as your super task in the play. And just how you went behind him and then we could see your reactions mm -hmm. and your repulsion <laughs> and just the, all of the emotions you were feeling. Then it was really freaky how he turned in your clothing into a fetish and then your yeah. reactions that to that. Really cool. I think <laughs> the other thing that John communicated with that yes. was the fact that he was going to devour her. Yeah, yeah. And Ooh, also yeah. the way that she ch touched him very gingerly as if I don't know what I'm doing yeah. and I don't want to do this. Yeah. Exactly, and also how to him, he just took it in, he drank He's it in eat her. hungrily. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got, regardless of my character, of, regardless of what my, what my position is as king, as, as future king, because at this point I'm not yet, um, I'm going to be though, and I have total control over, over this young, young girl. When she came in, and and disrobed in front of me, I got the same feeling of of the same nervous kind of um, shakes almost that I got when I was very f the very first time I was with girls making out with them, you know, from when I was just a little kid. It was like completely <laughs> brand. Yeah, I mean, like a kid in, in high school just making out for the first time. It, it was the same sort of shakes and. It, I never would have expected that to happen, but it, but it did. And it, I, this is the real value of Stanislavski's discovery of physical actions. Because you can remember all kinds of things through direct recall, then, but to find them physically is the hardest thing. To do it physically and to have a reassociation then becomes something you can use on stage and it becomes part of your conditioning so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's there now. We break the play into events, unit episodes, and actions. We know that the main action there is Antigone persuading Ismene to join her in burying the body of her brother, Polynesis. Doesn't he say you two scheming? What is, let's use a word from the play. Scheming, plotting in the dark, scheming this burial. Plotting in the dark. Plotting in the dark. Yeah. Let's say yeah. that's, that's better than clandestine. Yeah. Yeah, plotting in the dark. Yeah. That's great. That, that will give us images, it'll give us behavior. Great. Telling the novel is a little different than telling the story. It's complicated, and here you, is where you need to use wed gag and the magic if at every moment inside. So what it is is this, it's several steps you're coordinating psychophysically at once. Telling the novel is just like when you read a novel, you, you, you are reading all the reactions and thoughts and physical actions of the character in between the dialogue. Oh. Once I see the coast is clear, I know we have to talk very quickly because we don't have much time. I see that she's my sister, the last living, living sibling from our father, Oedipus. And I look at her and I think, we have to figure out what we're gonna do. And I say, my own flesh and blood, dear sister who I love and adore, dear Ismene, how many griefs has our father, Oedipus, handed down? I don't know what's going to happen now, whether we're going to have good luck or bad luck. I know nothing. And I think to myself, well, I have the guard who helps me, so this makes sense that she does it now. And I say, I thought so. That's why I brought you out here past the gates, so that you and I could talk in private. And I look at her and I realize that She's obviously scared, and this is scary, and what is wrong? I mean, obviously something terrible, besides what I already know of our brothers. Something's really wrong. And I think to myself, oh, you haven't even heard the half of it. His body is to be left unwept, unburied, a lovely treasure for the birds that scan the field to feast to their hearts' content. <laughs> Good. That's good. 
Let me ask you, what did you find physically? Because I saw you telling the novel, and then something kind of triggered, and you just started finding physical reactions, especially you, when you held the inner monologue in, but just started thinking of it more physically. Yeah, because she was talking, and... Uh... And you had no choice. <laughs> no, yeah. no, but um, because I was aware that I was just standing here, and so I literally went through a wed gag. I was Wonder, wondering and then evaluating, evaluating and really trying to hear what she was saying to me and then sort of making a decision, maybe exploring something of his, maybe how grossed out she would be about hearing how gruesome one, the death of one of the brothers was. I wasn't sure how much she can take, how strong, so I was exploring with that of how much I could take. You know At what I liked? Time, I, was much I liked the fact that you didn't sit down. I didn't feel, I felt like if I was in this circumstance, you, and if was, I, I would wouldn't. never sit yeah. down. I would be so, so anxiety ridden. Chairs, you know, no, why but, would... But, but, but if you had the chairs there, you may be Hide behind trying it. to, yeah. you know, you would but, sit there but, and, and trying to like, you know, if you were hiding. You should never have an object on stage that is not, not used. Being used. Let's do a device. A device is any tool we use to explore the text. But this is mostly to loosen up and explore the text with, what does the right side of the brain do? Creative. And what's the left side of the brain do? Analyze. Well, we've been doing a little bit of both. But let's really just throw the analytical side out and work. I want you to sing and dance the text. Do anything you want physically, but it has to go along with the rhythm of the text. That's what you're exploring. Who did the work? Let the dead and the God of death bear witness. I have no love for a friend who loves in words alone. Oh no, my sister, please don't reject me. Let me die beside you, consecrating the dead together. It was really a funny contrast. And what did you what did you explore? What did you discover? Well, singing it really like makes the text enter your body in a much Good. deeper place. And then moving about forces that just to just come out whatever. It's just really there are any number of devices and exercises you could do at home just with the text. As you know, I would go back and review the actor in the text by Cecily Berry and work on the vowel and consonant exercises from the RSC and other exercises that we do to really get the words in your body neurolinguistically. What did you find? I always think it's interesting how this exercise brings out movement and, and it brings out interesting pictures and poses and things that you wouldn't have thought of because you're no longer thinking, you're reacting very organically and emotionally. Right. Well, there comes a time, you know, in the rehearsal where we need to go back and look at the exact lines, especially after we've worked pedantically and then loosened up a little bit. And now let's pull back and re-examine the text for thoughts, images, and, and communication, making sure that you're communicating every thought and image to one another. And also for the logic of speech, for the sculpting and phrasing of the lines. Never, sister's child, or closer in blood than all my family gathered at my altar-worshipping guardian Zeus. You'll never escape, you and your blood sister, the most barbaric death. Yes, 
I accuse her equally in scheming this, this burial. Okay, L let's take a look at the structure of this speech just a bit. Are you getting his images? I have this um, image of this Mamie being chained up for some reason. Okay. You made a beautiful adaptation in the, in the last step when you improvised, not in the singing and dancing, but the one before that, that step that we took, when you improvised speaking to her very quietly, but very sharply. Something like that would make a nice adaptation here. You can try. No! Sister's child, or closer in blood than all my family gathered at my altar worshiping guardian Zeus! You let her escape! You and your blood sister! A most barbaric death! That's much better because now the inner panic and hysteria that comes from their fatigue is more frightening to her. Yes. What was your effect there? What was the effect on you? It's very frightening. It's very scared. Yeah, it's because scary. he's out of control. It's tyrannical. And I see the old man suddenly coming out. Of, it's like I'm not looking at John. I'm looking at an old man. It's just gone hysterical. Okay, so, so just like... We're, you know, movement needs physical action delineation and clarity. Speech needs it too, or the action's lost. I think we're beginning to reincarnate. So we're getting, like you said, per you described it perfectly. We're in the pool and we can't feel the bottom anymore. So it's freaking us out a little bit. Yes, but it's they had the, the same thing happen of last night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It's the beginning of reincarnation into the into the characters. Because the state of I am is there, mm -hmm. and so, and all the devices are there. We just need, let's start it from this moment when that has happened, and not worry about getting to that moment. Okay. He's my brother, and deny it as you will, your brother too. No one will ever convict me for a traitor. Why do you walk away? Um. I don't think I should. It's, it's completely against my instinct. Exactly. There's only two actions on stage. Convict me for a traitor. So desperate. And Creon has expressed me. No. He has no right to keep me from my own. Now, what is your reaction when she accuses you of being a traitor? I've been implying that she's a traitor, and I need to accuse her of being a traitor. I think that's Do right. you think that it... The, well, let's try to accuse, because she has been implying that's why you don't feel accused. Do you feel you need to be accused? I guess so. What do you need from her? Yeah, because you say so desperate. There has to be some kind of a physical reaction before you say that. Otherwise, so desperate really doesn't make sense. Desperate, what does desperate mean? The word to despair. Well, it's emotionally based. It's an emotional reaction. It's not out of logic. And I, I, for me, there's always kind of a feeling of, of violence okay. or maybe hysteria around Despair it. is Latin root, means to give up the spirit. Dispare, to give up. To despair means like what, people, what people do when they commit suicide. They give up hope. My thought or my intent behind holding your hands is I sort of feel like I'm, I'm really trying to convince you to do that. And I don't yeah. have to hold your hands to do it, but that was my convince intent behind your okay. words. So what needs to happen here is you need to f go flare up and lose control of yourself. Okay. And desperately mm -hmm. accuse her of being a traitor. And then that would, because what she right, needs is right. she needs to be able to justify mm -hmm. saying that you're a traitor. No one will ever convict me for a traitor! So desperate. And Creon has expressly. No! He has no right to keep me from my own. Oh, my poor sister, think. Think what a death our father died, hated, his reputation in ruins, driven on by the crimes he brought to life himself, mm -hmm. to gouge out his own eyes with his own two hands. And then mother, 
his mother and wife both in one, mutilating her life in the twisted noose. And last, our two brothers, dead in a single day. Now look at us, left so alone. Think what a death we'll die. Worst of all, if we violate the laws and override the fixed decree of the throne, its power. We must be sensible. Remember, we are women. We're not born to contend with men. Then too, we're underlings, ruled by much stronger hands, so we must submit to this and things still worse. I, for one, I'll beg the dead to forgive me, but I am forced. I have no choice but to be ruled by stronger hands. Why rush to extremes? It's madness. Madness. I won't insist. No. Even if you should have a change of heart, I never welcome you in the labor. Do as you like. Whatever suits you best, I will bury him myself. I will raise a mound for my dear brother. And if I die in that act, that death will be a glory. I will lie with the one I love and loved by him, an outrage sacred to the gods. I have longer to please the dead than to please the living here. In the kingdom down below, I'll lie forever. Kingdom down below, make that clear. In the kingdom down below, I'll lie forever. Do as you like. Dishonor the laws the gods hold in honor. I do them no dishonor. But defy the city, I have no strength for that. You have your excuses. I am on my way. I will raise a mound for him, for my dear brother. Oh, Tiggy, you're so rash. I'm afraid for you. Don't fear for me. Set your own life in order. Then don't at least work this out to anyone. Keep it a dear secret. Dear God, do that shout it from the rooftops. I'll hate you all the more for your silence. Tell all the world. So fiery and it ought to chill your heart. I know I please where I must please the most. Yes, but if you can, if you are in love with impossibility. Very well then, I will be done at last once my strength gives out. You're wrong from the start. You are off on a hopeless quest. If you say so, you will make me hate you. And hatred of the dead by all rights will haunt you night and day. Leave me to my absurdity. Leave me to suffer this dreadful thing. I will suffer nothing as great as death without glory. With that l one link missing, made the whole kind of bridge shaky. We couldn't get from one part to the next. Uh -huh. But her accusing you, and you, the, yeah. you did the right thing. Accusing. You walked and turned back and it used the momentum of the movement, the physical action, to attack and accuse her. That was good. Okay. You should keep that adaptation. That's a good one. Yeah, and, and then you took it all in. And so desperate, because you don't attack her back. Right. And, and then the really telling her straight on. Right. What her parents did. Didn't you learn anything from what they did? was really clear, it brought you through the whole speech. Yeah. It was one action. It was very good. Let us build some etudes, some silent etudes, silent improvisations as a character. Ooh, that just gave me shivers. That sense of horror needs to have 
its effect within the play because the tragedy needs to move us back and forth between pity and fear, fear and pity. That's how tragedy works. And the fact that through improvisation you were able to stir that in us means that you stirred it in yourself. You know we don't like to dwell on emotional memory in the way that right. method actors do because through physical actions and recreating the circumstances of the play, we we bring up, we store emotions, the emotional memory through physical actions. It's active analysis through physical actions, but needless to say, this stirs personal memories. And so in the rehearsal process, obviously you feel safe enough mm -hmm. to have created something parallel that then br brought up the associative memory. I had a very um, parallel uh, analogous emotional experience. When my father died, um, I hadn't seen him for two years. Um, when I went to go look at the body, it looked like him physically. But it wasn't him. And, um, and I remember looking down at him, knowing it wasn't him, it clearly wasn't him. Um, thinking, well, I should kiss him goodbye. And I didn't want to kiss a dead body. But I made myself do it. And he felt really rubbery and cold. You, had, you hadn't seen him? In, you saw him in the hospital before he died? By the oh. time I made it back, he was oh. already gone. Did you blow your nose in this? I don't think I... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. It's the first time that I've actually had a physical body. And I think having the physical body there suddenly brought the memory of my father and how if this body was decomposed and it was my own brother, oh. how would I react to it? And Using it would make me if. sick. Yeah, it would make me sick if I had to bury him, but I would make myself do it. And it wasn't just that it was decomposed, it would be that somebody you love is decomposed. And he's naked too, isn't he? Which is even worse. So now, I wasn't going to talk about analogous emotional experience till the very end and then just mention it, but since it came up, physical action stir emotions. Stanislavski kept saying, what is the best way to stir our emotional memory? And direct emotional recall through digging into the past is not the best way. Because he, he also realized by doing that, that direct recall, direct use of emotions always can ha will always have, he said, to paraphrase it, dire, uh, dire consequences. Dire is a very serious word. But yet the actor with talent in the school of living experience, and the title of this book is The Living Actor, must live the life of the character. And certainly Greek tragedy is very, very emotional. So you have, you know, all of us here are at the age of maturity and beyond, the age of, above the age of maturity, emotional maturity. So that means that we have the necessary emotions to do Greek tragedy. It is not too soon. It would be wrong to put children through this when expected or to push your emotions to expect it. But when it comes up of its own, that's fine. What we want to do is let it rest and not expect this to happen in the scene. It, it, the scene, to be artistic, it, there must be a poetic reflection. And the distance creates that. Okay, we reached this point that we're coming to the rehearsal, which sees whether or not we are ready to move on, the silent rehearsal. I mean, it's not necessarily who's right and wrong here, it's that everybody's destroyed by this pride. Nobody's really listening to each other. Yeah. Everyone's, no one's really opening their heart to try to understand the other side, the other's position. So maybe that's, maybe, maybe by really showing that these people are a family and that they've, there is an underlying love that they are stamping out because of their pride, maybe we've missed that point thus far. And we, by bringing that out, we might reach people we might not otherwise have reached.
their eyes fixed on the ground. Speak up. Do you deny you did this, yes or no? I did it. I don't deny a thing. Tell me briefly, no long speeches. Were you aware there was a decree forbidding this? Well aware. It was public, how could I avoid it? And still you had the go to break this law. Of course I did. It wasn't Zeus, not in the least, who made this proclamation, not to me. Nor did I think your edict had such force that you, a mere mortal, could override the god. The great unwritten, unshakable traditions, they are alive. Not just today or yesterday. They live forever, from the first of time, and no one knows when they first saw the light. These laws, I was not about to break them. Not out of fear for some man's wounded pride and face the retribution of the gods. Die, I must. I've known it all my life. How could I keep from knowing, even without your death sentence ringing in my ears? And if I am to die before my time, then I consider that again. Who on earth alive in the midst of so much grief as I could fail to find his death a rich reward? So for me at least, to meet this doom of yours is precious little but if I had allowed my own mother's son to rot an unburied corpse, that would have been agony. This is nothing! And if my present actions strike you as foolish, then let's just say I've been accused of folly by a fool. Like father, like daughter. Passionate. Wild. You have not learned to bend before adversity. Believe me, the stiffest stubborn wills fall the hardest. The toughest iron, tempered strong in the white hot fire, you'll see it crack and shatter first of all. And I've known spirited horses you can break with a light bit. Proud, rebellious horses. There is no room for pride, not in a slave, not with the Lord and Master standing by. You were an old hand at insolence when you overrode the edict we made public. But once you had done it, the insolence twice over, to glory in it, laughing, mocking us to our face with what you had done. I am not the man. Not now. You are the man if this victory goes to you and you go free. Never! Sister's child or closer in blood than all my family clustered at my altar worshiping guardian. Zeus, you'll never escape. You and your blood sister. The most barbaric death. Yes. I accuse her equally in scheming this, this burial. It never fails. The mind convicts itself in advance when scoundrels are up to no good, plotting in the dark. Oh. oh. But I hate it more when traitors caught red-handed try and glorify his crime. Creon, what more do you want than my arrest and execution? Nothing. Then I shall have it all. Then why delay? Your moralizing repels me. Every word you say, pray God it always will. So naturally, all I say repels you too. Enough! Give 
me glory. What greater glory could I win than to give my own brother decent burial? The citizens would agree. They would praise me too if their lips were locked in fear. Lucky tyrants, the Percocets of power, ruthless power to do and say whatever pleases them. You alone, of all the people in Thebes, see things that way. They see it just that way, but defer to you and keep their tongues in leash. And you, aren't you ashamed to differ so from them? So disloyal! I'm not ashamed for a moment, not to honor my own brother, my own flesh and blood. Wasn't it Eucles a brother too? Cut down facing him. Brother, yes. By the same mother, the same father. Then how can you render his enemy such honor, such impieties in his eyes? If Teocles dead and buried, he will never testify to that. He will, if you honor the traitor just as much as him. But it was his brother, not some slave that died. Ravaging our country! But if Teocles died fighting in our behalf. And no matter. Death longs for the same rights for all. Never the same for the patriot and the traitor. Who, Creon, who on earth can say the ones below don't find this pure and uncorrupt? Never! Once an enemy, never a friend, not even after death. I was born to join in love, not in hate. That is my nature. Then go down below in love. If love you must, love the dead. While I am alive, no woman is going to lord it over me. You, in my own house, you viper. Slinking undetected, sucking my life blood. I never knew I was breeding twin disasters. The two of you, rising up against my throne. Come, tell me. Will you confess your part in this crime or not? Answer me. Swear to me. I did it. Yes. If only she consents. I share the guilt and the consequences, too. No. Justice will never suffer that. Not you. You were unwilling. I'm not ashamed to sell through troubles with you. Make your troubles mine. Who did the work? Let the dead and the god of death bear witness. I have no love for a friend who loves in words alone. Please don't reject me. Let me die beside you, consecrating the dead together. Never share my dying. Don't lay claim to what your hands never touched. My death will be enough. What do I care for life cut off from you? Ask Creon. Your concern was all for him. Why? Why do you abuse me so? It doesn't help you now. You're right. If I mock you, I get no pleasure from it, only pain. Dear one, what can I do to help you, even now? Save yourself. I don't grudge you your survival. No, no. And denied my portion in your death? You chose to live, I choose to die. Not without any kind of caution that I could voice. Your wisdom appealed to one world. Mine another. But look, we're both 
guilty. We're both condemned to death. Courage. Live your life. I gave myself to death long ago so that I might serve the dead. They're both mad, I tell you. The two of them. One's just proved it. The other has been that way since she was born. True, my king. The sense you were born with cannot last forever. You commit cruelty on someone long enough, and their mind begins to go. Yours did, when you chose to commit your crimes with her. How can I live my life without her? Her? Don't even mention her. She no longer exists. What? You'd kill your own son's bride? Absolutely. There are other fields for him to plow. Perhaps. But none as great a bond as theirs. A worthless woman for my son. Dearest Haven, your father wrongs you so- Enough, enough, all this talk of marriage. Creon, you're really gonna rob your son of Antigone? Death will do it for me. Break that marriage off. So it's settled then. Antigone must die. Settled, yes. We both know that. Stop wasting time! Bring them in! From now on, they'll act like real women. 